Jesse, Steve, mm. you've been looking after them? Uh, the, my f- family? Have you been looking after them? Of course I have been. Jesse, you've been looking after them? I have. How the, is that? With the three, with 4.0. That's what are we, we on oh, now? The Manscaped Package 4.0, what? Performance Package 4.0. Talking oh. about a, a different family. They haven't asked for the five. It's, it, they we're talking about the creator of your family. Partially, anyway. <laughs> this show is presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash dangle to receive 20% off your next purchase. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Two fabulous pieces of news. The NHL season, I'm sorry, Chet to the Czech Republic, but officially starts tonight. Uh, by the way, Dominic Kashik tweeting that the NHL is no longer welcome in the Czech Republic. I don't believe, even though people don't realize that it's a democracy over there. I don't believe he has the authority to make that call. Dominic Hasek more of a spirit thing. Is not the emperor of Czechia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, he said it was Czech Republic on his tweets, but it is Czechia. Uh, I I've heard I heard from some of our listeners who are from the Czech Republic on the Discord and stuff that Czechia was kind of just a way for the government to come up with a new kind of catch all for their sports organizations, make it easier for the rest of the world, and that a lot of them like Czech Republic better. Instead of Czechia. Oh, okay. Oh. So, yeah. So, yeah. well, you know, listen, if Hashik's saying Czech Republic, and yeah. I forget Czechia from time to time, I'll say Czech Republic, and I don't think people, it doesn't sound like people would be that offended. Can you rebrand a country? Right. That's what they were trying to do. We're going to hard launch the, Czechia. For the international <laughs> landscape. And so, there's different opinions on if you should use Czechia or Czech Republic. They have a bunch of wacky, okay. waving, inflatable, inflatable yeah. tube men. Yeah. Like, welcome it's to... Czechia now! But, like, they only did one layer of paint, so you can still see Czech Republic. Right, yes, sort of, exactly. Like, exactly. Just faintly it's underneath like you, it. You're still in your neighborhood able to point out the old blockbusters because the sign is still sort of there on the That's concrete. True. You know? It's that all is, sort of there. There's a... I think it was on Reddit, but it's it's... It's a fast food restaurants that have just taken over buildings of other places. So it'll be like a KFC, but uh, you know how they, they have the giant bucket? Yes. And now it's like a library, but they <laughs> kept the giant bucket. And it's just all of those images. There's, there's, a, there's a Popeye's chicken I pass on the way here that is very obviously a Pizza Hut. <laughs> yes. Is that on, on Kingston Road? Yes. There's also, if you, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the red roofed thing on Kingston Road at, I believe, is it Lawrence? Uh, Same area as the Pizza Hut. I used to go to that Pizza Hut, by the way. It's an old Dairy Queen, and I think now it's like a, I think it's like an animal training place or something like I, that. I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking it's about. It's an old yeah. D- DQ. Yeah. Um, uh, the other great piece of news today is that the Hockey Canada Board of Directors has announced that Scott Smith, Scott Smith who is the CEO, uh, along with the entire board, have all agreed to step down. And this what? comes in the wake of wow. Bauer pulling its uh, support for Hockey Canada, and obviously it's the official equipment supplier. So Bauer was pretty much the last one. Yeah, like someone made a list of all their major sponsors. And- oh, Bauer's yeah. out. Well, over the weekend it was uh, Canadian Tire, uh, Nike. Uh, Nike? Tim Hortons. <laughs> Nike makes the jerseys. <laughs> right. So <laughs> that was that was one that I saw people flag as okay. I think they might have to do something now. Uh, they don't have uniforms. <laughs> like, yeah, it's you know not obviously not to make light of it, but uh, it 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 has taken on this angle of the Hockey Canada scandal has taken on. Uh, almost a dark humor to it because we're all just sitting there going friggin just leave yeah all you have to do is leave yeah and like you know and the thing was is that they could have they could have done this and then a company like canadian tire which is a massive funder of hockey canada wouldn't have had to say something like we're leaving and we're leaving permanently like they're they're completely diverting their funds to other things they're not coming back you might have some of the other sponsors come back but you, you could have avoided all of this stuff. Yeah, also, if you'd been apologetic and been like, you know what, we really messed this up. We want to be a part of the change. I mean, sponsors can, I mean, retire and unretire, like yeah. wrestlers. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure they'll come back and they'll rebrand it. And this is, I'm sure they, I'm sure in some offices somewhere, there are already agencies 
planning the campaigns. Yes. Um, but you know, you don't want the Paralympic program to suffer. You don't want the women's program to suffer. You don't want the men's program to suffer either. All of the all of those programs, the Paralympic and the women's programs, were going to continue to be supported by a lot of the sponsors that left. Well, so they then, were taking their money away from the men's program because that's the big generator of money for hockey Canada yes, right now. And the program that was basically at the root of all the issues. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it was ever an issue of those programs suffering then. I don't think it was ever an issue of the lights being shut off, uh, which oh, was I don't know, unreal. Steve. And a big shout out to Andrea Skinner for an all time sports news dump. All yeah. time. Yeah. The Jays hadn't blown it, they were mid blowing it. They were mid historic playoff collapse. And oh, and by the way, I resigned. Yeah. Oh, Just yeah. a little I saw Rick's tweet and I'm like, Rick. <laughs> win, win or lose. Win or lose. It was that was gonna be the time that they were gonna do that. Yeah. And I mean her contract was up in four weeks anyway, but it was funny at the hearing she was like, I haven't made a decision yet. I, I still haven't made and they're like, You must have thought about it. No, I'm just focused on this. I'm gone. I don't know. Well, what's she going to do? Quit mid-hearing? I don't know. Right. And her resignation letter, it it maintained the same energy she was giving during those hearings, like her emphasizing that she was a volunteer and and she she didn't really sign up for the media storm that came with the position and all that. But, you know, good. All it took, you know, for all of this to happen, Scott Smith to be gone was just like four months of them digging in their heels. Thank God that's all it took. Yeah, she, she said, what was it? I, my time volunteering for Hockey Canada has come to an end. That was the, the energy. Okay, but why? What you didn't need to volunteer? Yeah, we're we're you volu- super didn't need to do this, and right. you did it anyway. Why'd you do it? Yeah, Jesse was making a. Anyway, anyways, we're all done. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all done, done there. Well, I mean, but Good we're not. Riddance. We're not. Yeah. It's key that you know that we're not done. No, we're done with that part. Yes, because yeah. um, we're still we still haven't heard from Bob Nicholson. Oh my He's coming God. out. Like the we're just waiting on the hearing to happen. I know, but it, you know, it's I'm in just, the next I think two weeks. I'm gonna say it again. I'm not hearing a whole heck of a lot about Bob Nicholson out there, guys. Not hearing a whole heck of a lot of that coverage. So I did I did some thinking about that. You know, you're you're really good at this. I'll be like, we need to talk about something. And you'll be like, all right, what's there? Other than mentioning it. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about Bob Nicholson, and we you know, we said what we had to say last show. Where, you know, the president of a Canadian NHL team, the president of Connor McDavid's uh, NHL team, is about to go on hearing in front of the Canadian government. Mm -hmm. And that's a massive deal. What else is there until he speaks? What might he know is the question. That is a great, it's a great question. What might he know? And I think there's nothing wrong with writing an article setting that up and saying, what might Bob Nicholson know? I think it's. I'm waiting for that headline. What might Bob Nicholson know? Edmonton Journal. Yeah, it's like where where is that? It's a question worth asking, and I also think it's a question for people smarter than I am because I I don't know how to even go about finding the answer. So I'm excited to see what comes out of this, or interested. I I think sometimes I think sometimes in that situation, Steve. I think you can first off you can ask other people who are part of other sport organizations. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Volleyball Canada. Talk to the CEO of Volleyball Canada. Sure. And there is one. I, I and you bet. say, hey, what do you know? Mm-hmm. If this came up, would you know about it? If there was right. two secret funds, would you have known about it? Right. If there was a, an assault by one of your players, would you have known about, known about it? Right. And so and, it's interesting. So then, no, and, and there is like Sport Canada funds a whole bunch of different things. You could talk to anyone from Sport Canada and say, hey, what would this person know? What would a person in this position know? And say, listen, we're not saying Bob knew. Or does know, I guess we'll find out. But we do know from this head of this organization that that person would know. I, you know, when I, when we talk about this story and I talk about how muddy the waters are, I always, uh, hello mom and dad, if you're listening, I always use them as a barometer because <laughs> they're, they approach it two different ways. My dad will just like, just yesterday it's, you know, Thanksgiving dinner and he's just like, so. Here's how I understand it. And he'll bring me mostly correct things and, you know, I'll steer him in the right direction on a, on a few others. And then there's my mom who's trying 
uh, to be actively involved. And in, like, th- I got a text from her this morning. Bauer just dropped out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I think, I, I think it's still a tremendously confusing story, mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of people. So with the Bob Nicholson thing, I don't know if this is the right way to approach it. Um, I, I think it's important that we flag it. And then the second we get a, a, a huge information dump, which is exactly what we're going to get when he does his hearing. That's when we can get to work. Okay. Also, we worship Tina. Of, of course. We worship Tina. Clementina. That's right. Absolutely. Um, I was alarmingly years old when I found out my mom's real name is not Tina. <laughs> How old were you? So I was like a teenager. Really? Like, yeah. I was like, what How'd do you, you find out? I just. What's I, your mom's real What? Clementina. Clementina. Yeah. yeah. It's all. Yeah. I, uh, and then I fi- find out all my uncles, like, because mm-hmm. she has three brothers. None of them are the name that I call them. Okay, what are the names? <laughs> Give me the names. It was Lenny, Rocky, and Dom. Right. And Dom uh, or Dominic. Kaizon. <laughs> Kaizon. Yeah, Lu- yeah. Luigi and uh, Toad. Yeah, yeah. Chris yeah. Pratt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, so be what? Leonar- Lenny is Leonardo. Leonardo. Rocky is... Come on. Rocco. Rocco. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and then what's the last one? Was the short Dominic. One? Domenico. Oh, okay. And Clementina. That, don't those ever are, say I'm not Italian. Those don't ever say it. Delicious names. Yeah. They're great names. Nobody yeah. names like the Italians do. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, okay. So we got uh, we got the Rangers and Lightning tonight and the Golden Knights and the Kings. Um, and then all the Canadian teams sort of kicking it off in the next couple of days after that. Leafs Canadians tomorrow um, and Oilers Canucks. I, I, I've never understood. So they start the season with Leafs Canadians, but they never start the season with like Oilers Flames. And the Oilers and Flames are only playing three times this year anyway. But it's, it's very it, odd. It's a that's a that's an easy one, right? Not a slam dunk. And then I would have Canucks play the Kraken because that's the that's the non rivalry that I think we all want to happen. Uh, I mean, you got to try to make it a thing, I suppose, right? I mean, the Kraken have to be a thing before it can be. Yeah, a thing. they have to be good. You got to play playoff games versus each other. I, I'm curious. I'm curious, and m- maybe you guys can tweet this at us or talk about it on the Discord. Like, are Vancouver and Seattle fans excited about that prospective rivalry? Because I mean, it's a it's a short drive, isn't it? I think in sports, proximity doesn't create rivalries as much as the matches against the other team. So, like right now, if Ottawa's not good and Toronto's great, there's not really a rivalry there unless something on the ice happens. Yeah, it's like know? there's like a chippiness to it. Yeah. yeah. But last year, Battle of Alberta mm-hmm. was just that. Exactly. Because it's it's the chippiness, it's the fans, but it's also two teams vying for first place. But if if the games aren't chippy, if they're just regular games, then the proximity doesn't automatically create a rivalry. The right. games also have to be chippy. They also have to matter a little bit. So maybe it's like the NHL pushing them together, but instead of saying kiss, they're saying fight. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, why don't you get into a like, uh, bench clearing brawl in the opening? We game need a season? moment. Yeah. We need a moment of Vancouver versus Seattle, where it's the, it's the highlights the next day, and somebody and and somebody's fighting Brock Besser, and, and that's where the documentary it's a dirty hit begins. You know? And that's where the rivalry yeah. begins. But nothing's yeah. happened so far. I they're just kind of close. I, this is this is silly. This is dumb. But I, I, I'm a big believer in magic when it, when it comes to sports. And Seattle's first game last year, they were down 3 nothing, And they stormed all the way back. But they end up losing the game. Oh. Vegas, in their first game, gets their asses kicked. But Marc-Andre Fleury stands on his skull and brain. James Neal scores two goals. They win 2-1. And part of me wonders how different Seattle's season could have gone if they had just won that first game. Because, well, you're talking about <laughs> moments. You're talking about moments, and I'm trying to remember a moment from the Kraken's first season. That's very wishful and I, thinking. And I don't have a lot. Oh. Well, I'm not saying they would have gone to the final, <laughs> but, like, it would have been more exciting Maybe they went a couple more, like, coming off that game, but the rest of the season, they had no goaltending. It wasn't really their fault. I will tell no. you how well they would have done. They, instead of 27 wins, would have had 28. <laughs> like so yeah, maybe so 30 <laughs> maybe they'd have 62 <laughs> points instead of 60 oh no, uh, you don't believe in magic no because ron you? francis did a bad job at the expansion draft no so he's believing keep, keep holding on to the belief that he's done a great job ron, guys he has it ron don't ever stop believing in magic ron. we're slow we're old and we're injured great job 
<laughs> I don't think old. I don't They're think old. you carry a Too game old. one win over eighty two games. Unfortunately, yeah. no, but it's a. <laughs> It's an interesting way to start your season. <laughs> it is. I wish I wish better for Seattle. Okay, this season. Me too. I want moments. Yeah, agreed. They have to be watchable. Yeah, as we said in the season they previews, were watchable. they were not watchable. They were depressing. It was bad. They I have need such goals. cool jerseys, and it's like they, I need you need you. If you're gonna have a cool jersey, you have to have swagger to match that. One thing and if of, you're gonna have a cool goal horn, you got to use it. One thing about Score. Seattle was that they were a high effort team. They tried really hard. <laughs> I mean, you should watch me play hockey. I try really yeah. hard out there too. I'd say the like, skill wasn't always there, but it was this, it was a team that tried really hard. And I commend them for that. Fine. Where's that kind of support when I screw up, man? Do you, do no, you does Jesse you, ever support us you, like you, that? You no, which we try really hard no, too. There's no, no support I like do, that. I don't believe there's effort in your game. Oh, I, I think you screw up because you're hot dogging. Wow. Like, I wow. See I, like Adam is a f- Adam goes to the corner and he says, "Not today. I got I got a family back yeah. at home. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not getting injured today. I am the perception of Willie Nylander. Yeah, <laughs> Adam's not in the corners. By the way, by That's the why way, I'm not to give you your props. I Steve think, sometimes I, though, mm. sometimes in the corners. Hey. Sometimes in the corners. <laughs> not Sometimes in the corners. Not all the time. Well, yeah, Jesse uh, is going to see me in the corners a lot when we start playing hockey together this week. Yeah, we have I'm, uh, Are you guys playing hockey? Together? And I'm fishing the puck out because I fucking lost. When it. are you guys playing hockey? We're Fridays. doing like instructional league. Yeah. What? You would, you would you're, straight you're up be, be way too good. For you're not good it. enough for it. It's, it's like for people learning hockey. When are you guys playing it? Fridays. Friday nights. What? Yeah. yeah. It's, you it's, didn't even invite me. You no, you're, you can't. You wouldn't be able to. You'd be too good for it. You'd be way too good. Okay. Well, I've been looking for. I was talking to uh, Robert from our SDPN socials team, and I and Robert is doing power skating, and I want to get back into power skating because I think it would be a great break from like, you know, uh, uh, obviously I don't have time to go to the gym very much right now. Not that anybody of you could tell. I really hide it well. But um, I, think, I think you're looking great, sweetie. Thanks, pal. But uh, the. One of the things I want to do is like, I want to do cardio, but I don't want to do like running on a treadmill cardio. Do hockey. That's what I'm saying. Take a shift so if, that's too long. Mm-hmm. So if that's I what do, I do. If I could do like power skating where you just, they skate you for an hour like they did when you were a kid and you, and you die, you feel like you're going to die right on the ice. Then I feel like that I would get my cardio. You should do that and away there is, from Steve and I. There is adults. Wow. Because we can't stop. So we need to is do that, our so own that's thing. the kind of instructional. Stop. <laughs> Not on a dime, but I could, I could. So don't overestimate your abilities. <laughs> I can stop on a really, really large time. I can pivot. <laughs> there you go. And I could go backwards a bit. Stopping is essentially like a pivot that you push harder on. For sure. It is. Man. Because you're turning. You're just turning quicker. <laughs> I just sort it. of do it. I hate that all my friends who are like, oh, yeah, you just sort of stop. I hate that they were all correct. <laughs> it does sort of just happen. I was like, this, this isn't helpful. And no, you just do it enough times and you're like, oh, that's how. I want to see you guys by the end of the season, if you're going to do this instructional thing, I want to see you doing skating backwards and doing crossovers backwards. Oh, shit. Okay, well, crossovers, that's a magical magic that I don't understand. Yeah, well, I want you leaning into, I want I want some power turns where the stick's like all the way, oh. all the way where you're going. It's almost behind your butt. You better be like so Mitch. You better be doing yeah. the, the like splits thing he does. Absolutely. Right? His, po- his toes are pointed outwards. The he just mo- goes mohawk, around. Yeah. yeah. You better be doing that by the end of like this month. I do that uh, at the beginning uh, when I'm on the ice, making sure my groin doesn't explode <laughs> before every skate. <laughs> and you're doing it stationary. <laughs> yeah, stationary. Skate blades off the ice, lying down. <laughs> um, there's a few things that we are going to talk about, including what the Leafs are, are going to start the season with. Some insane cap gymnastics pulled off by oh. a couple of teams. Uh, did the Avalanche get Blink-182 back together? Uh, and some other uh, controversies that happened this weekend. But first, you can bet that. Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook presents You Can Bet That with David Bastel. Must be 19 plus. Please play responsibly, Ontario only. His name is David, and he has picks. He has picks for you. Yeah. Actually, this this one's really interesting. I'm glad you brought this up, David. What game? Hockey. Sorry, which team will Correct. Obi score his 800th goal against? Oh. And and so, like, just to give you, um, uh, yeah, give it, let us know how far away he is. Okay. So so Dave's got the you, you've got the odds up, but he is 20 goals away. Yep. And Dave, when you when you came to these odds, I, it's interesting that the Ottawa Senators are number one 
along with the Flyers and Jets at eight. How did you guys come to these? Is, is it like, did you look at the schedule? Like, how does this all work? Well, that's exactly it, Adam. Um, it's one of those things where, where are we projecting Ovi to actually hit 800, right? Is it 25 games? Is it 30 games? Is it the 30? You know, because you know how he is. He, he could sit there in game number one and score three goals. For your sake, I hope he doesn't. Yes. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, and then it'll kind of alter everything, right? So, we are projecting at Sports Interaction for Ovi to hit that 800 goal somewhere between, I'm going to say, November the 30th to December the 11th. Mm-hmm. So I know it's a little bit of a less than a two week window, somewhere in that range. So that's why we're targeting in those areas because you have the Senators play in that week, the, the Flyers play that week, the Jets play uh, on December 11th. So that might, you know, even Columbus is part of that equation because they play them on the 11th. So it, it's all, or the first of uh, December, I should say. So it's all about, you know, projecting and is he going to come up blazing? Is he going to slow down? It's, it's, it's a fun little bet that, you know, you could have uh, some tinkering with and, and when he actually may or may not score. See, I love this. And I'm looking at the cap schedule right now. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the date guys. Are you ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. December 17th, it's a Saturday night versus Toronto. And the reason Ooh. I say this is because Ooh. Alexander Ovechkin career versus the Leafs, yep. uh, 41 goals, 33 assists in 53 games. 41 goals in 53 games against the Leafs. So Big spotlight. The, the reason I was looking through my phone there is I was like, I think he's going to score in game 32. And that's December 13th against the Blackhawks. No. Two games later. Right. Is the Leafs? <laughs> it's the Leafs. It's 100%. It has to be the Leafs. By the way, the Leafs are at 12 on the odds. Also, uh, yes. we got uh, the uh, we got like a normal game to bet on, Dave. I know. Toronto, it's Montreal. Exciting. I know. It's exciting. Wednesday night. Leafs favorites at Sports Interaction paying uh, 140 on the money line. Puck line is something I'm kind of interested in because it's near a two. But again, in a puck line, the Leafs have to win by two or more goals to qualify as a win on that bet. Over-unders at six and a half. Any feels on this, guys, as far as hunches? I know I know Montreal plays Toronto well. And it's the Leafs the are slow game starters. Of the year. It's, it's tough. The Leafs are slow starters. Yeah, I, it's three two overtime. I feel like. Yeah, I've been I've been hammering it that the Leafs are going to have a really difficult October, and if they lose the first one, I have a really hard time believing they're going to win the second one. <laughs> so I I have the Leafs in this one because they uh have to. <laughs> okay, I like that. Uh, I got to try can, that on my NFL pick. I'm taking. Yeah. I'm taking to win. I'm taking Toronto at one forty, but I will take uh, Montreal in the puck line. Because I think I think it's going to be a tight game. I really do. Because the Leafs just do that. Yeah, now, I could I could see overtime or a shootout. Better in chief, Jesse. What would you take here? Uh, I would take the over. I think you got. Uh, I think you got the offensive players are a lot warmed up, more warmed up than the goalie. So the bet I would make on the game today would be over six. And over a half. six and a half goals. Yeah. Early season power play. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, good point. I think that'd be my best bet for tomorrow night. David, we will talk to you again on Friday. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks, guys. See you then. Our next partner is a pretty cool product. It's Athletic Green. Woo! Yeah, you're athletic and you're the color of green. This is the product for you. Is your shirt green? Yes, it is green. Yeah. It is green. Yeah. It's like off green. Listen, I, in actuality, if you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, then you got to check out Athletic Greens. I'm sure you will agree. Uh, most of us are not huge fans of having to take a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning. Mm-hmm. But Athletic Greens, uh, you know, it can get rid of all the extra vitamin bottles and finally make some room in your cabinet for other things. Athletic Greens is the all-in-one solution, and it actually tastes good. And as I've told you many times before, it is lifestyle friendly. We are all very specific eaters in this era. Oh, era! Thank you. Whether you I eat keto, I thought you were referring to my lactose intolerance. No, no, no. Okay. Well, I mean that, that this helps too because okay, if you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free. Both of these guys should be dairy free. One of them is, one of them is not. Uh-uh. And we I have to smell, it, we, he's a farty guy. Uh, athletic Greens will not make you that though. Also gluten free too. So it contains one, uh, sorry, less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, artificial anything. It tastes good too. So here's what we want you to do. You can reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com and the promo code is what, Jesse Blake? SDP. That's right it is. Again, 
That is athleticgreens.com slash STP to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when we first heard about Mint Mobile and how it offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, we thought, okay, there's got to be a catch to this, right? But after uh, talking to them, using their service, uh, it all made sense. There isn't there isn't one catch. It's amazing. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they are the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those savings directly on to you. Uh, for those who just hate looking at your phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family and at Mint, you can start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash STP. That's mintmobile.com slash STP. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. Come on. It's mintmobile.com slash STP. Well, I guess you two idiots... Mm -hmm. if if the comment section is to believe you two idiots we're not incorrect about uh nick robertson he is not on the starting lineup today gentlemen fucking we said it for like a month no (laughs) i'm not happy did you watch do you even watch the game do you know hockey oh my god have you ever been on reddit where they know hockey they do they do they do know hockey but uh, robertson should be for all rights on this team it's just and keith said it yesterday it comes down to the fact that one is waivers exempt and one is not. Yeah, and Sean McKenzie uh, had a good TikTok as as he does. He is a very he's good very TikTok. good at that. He is quite good. Um, basically, as I understand it, if Tavares is not ready to go for the second game of the season on Thursday, Nick Robertson can be recalled on an emergency basis. Mm-hmm. Okay, but uh, I, yeah, I it looks like Tavares is going to be back. So it was interesting because. What what Keith also said is that they're if Tavares isn't ready to go, they're just going to dress a short lineup, which in your home opener is garbage, frankly. Um, you had the whole summer to prepare for this, man. Like I, yeah, someone got hurt. Um, yeah, that happens in man. hockey. Mm-hmm. They're four dollars. You, you can't dress a short lineup in the home opener. They're four dollars under the cap right now. That's what Cap Friendly revealed yesterday. Yeah, so they're they're spending over the, a bunch of teams are spending over, but they're using LTIR. We've gone over this a thousand times. The closer you are to the cap, um, the more you are allowed to dip into your LTIR pool, which encourages teams to spend more money, which flies directly in the face of what the hell the salary cap is there for. So I don't know what any of us are doing here, and. The Zach but Aston. No, no, no. Tell me again how teams don't like using it. Uh, they don't like it, man. No, it's hard. It's, uh, we yeah. hate it. Um, <laughs> and Zach Aston Reese, I think we discovered why he was on a PTO. Uh, it was never a PTO, ever, at no. any point. It was a, we don't know what we can give you yet. Do you care if it's a few thousand dollars? So yeah, you're going to make over 800 grand anyway. And Zach Aston Reese, who's obviously a legend said, yeah, don't worry. It's cool. And then Brandon Pridham said, what can I get for this many mm-hmm. and plunked down a bunch of random money on the table. And if you had listened to the CJ show, he said as much, which as I that. don't, <laughs> if you're, if you're a I listener love, of that I gotta show, say, I love the CJ show. <laughs> you would have known this weeks ago when CJ said at the end of this, Zach Aston Reese is going to have a contract. It's just no. not right now. <laughs> and they said, "Here, well, what is the what is the the dollar amount?" Adam has it. The dollar amount, what for Zach Aston Reese? Yeah, eight hundred forty thousand. Eight hundred? No, 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 no. There's, there's. <laughs> oh, like, you want me to like Brandon, look in? when Brandon Pridham signs a contract, he uses all six of those digits. All right, I'll look it up on Cap Friendly here. All six of them. Eight four zero six three zero. That's that six hundred thirty bucks. He makes sure every <laughs> cap hit looks like a phone number. Take Pritam and uh, Dubas out for lunch for that one. Yeah. That or, is an exact number. Or just ask Mitch and Austin to, to pay because they're the highest paid guys. And also they had to get their jersey number. If it had there. been 640 or 650, the Leafs are in cap overage. Isn't that funny? <laughs> $600, 
Six hundred thirty dollars. If it had been six forty, they're six bucks. Six thirty five. Yeah, they're going. Yeah. <laughs> Could they have given him the four dollars? Is what I want to know. No. They- <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? He, today he might be thinking like, "Why couldn't you just give me the four what? bucks? Wouldn't that have been hilarious?" Why, <laughs> Dubis, you cheap jerk! <laughs> give him the four bucks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume the accounting is easier when it ends in a zero. Give him the four <laughs> bucks. <laughs> give it to him. You let the Canucks out calculator you. <laughs> By having zero dollars, give them the four bucks. Justice for for Czar Z A R. Oh, Zach asked me. I don't like that. <laughs> no, you're right. There's no, nothing wrong with Czar like either. Czar is not what we're going with. Just oppressive regime regimes. Z A R. Oh, he's Z A R. He's been Z A R. What about career. what about uh, Choco? What? Or, what about or, Raz? Or, or chocolate? We call him chocolate because it's Reese. Oh no! <laughs> or or we call them peanut butter. Peanut or butter. Peanut? peanut butter's good. Oh PB? my god! PB Reese is how we finally get our cup. Oh, oh hey! We got right. cups. He, he was <laughs> mid-season four. One of the missing pieces. Oh, what? I think I think cups. Cup cup yeah. cupsy. <laughs> cupsy. <laughs> That's, that sounds like a <laughs> no, sounds like another <laughs> crave presentation of the universe. What's the uh, Shorzy and what's the other one? The uh, oh, the fucking uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. you know you know the, the yeah. 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 Anyway, um, Cupsy, let's do it. Uh, Cupsy, if so Tavares <laughs> is ready to go, the lineup is as followed, and you might want to get used to this because the top six seem pretty much set until Robertson's up full time. Bunting, Matthews, Marner, Neil, Ender, Tavares. Dennis Malgan, Lee, fa- Lee fan favorite. Woo. Angval, Kerfoot, Yarncroak. And this, this fourth line is, I think, on paper, the most, uh, uh, the worst fourth line I've ever seen in Leafs history. And what I mean what by is- that is worst to play against. Oh. <laughs> Aston Race, Kampf, Obey Kubel. Who has that? That's Jonas Siegel. I see. And every- by the way, Riley Brody, Muzzin Hall, Giordano, San- Sandy. What I kept saying is uh, everyone who has David Camp on the third line, or sorry, on the fourth line, you're wrong. That's the third line center. What are you doing? Um, for Kerfoot to be the what appears to be the full time third line center, not how I saw this season going. Mm. I mean, we traded that guy months ago. Where? What are you doing? Where are you? Where are you putting him? Well, are you is, moving him around? Well, I like this the Kerfoot. Thing. I, that's depth. This that's is a good. perfect lineup. So what the, the reason they're doing it is they have obviously made a decision that we're not doing the Nylander, Kerfoot, uh, Tavares thing. Nylander, so sometimes reporters screw up the left and right, but it appears Jonas Eagle has them intentionally correct. So Nylander is on the left, mm-hmm. Tavares is center, Malgan, who is sometimes the center, sometimes the right wing, is on the right wing. Engvall, Kerfoot, Yarncroak, you could flip Engvall and Kerfoot, but Kerfoot's probably the better center at this point. Yeah. And that's I mean that's a, that's a really that's a stupidly deep lineup. And and you know you you got some scoring threat th- from the third line, but the fourth line. The reason I think it's so something worth actually focusing on is that if this line can live up to its billing, which is defensively strong, it would be the best. Because the Leafs have never ever since we started the show been able to figure out what the hell to do with the fourth line. When we started the show, it was in the uh, the wake of. Uh, Brian Burke's dismissal in the Dave Nonis era, which was top two lines score, bottom two lines punch face. Yes. And and be otherwise useless. Truculence. Truculence. And and like and when we say useless, I'm talking like guys who could not play anymore. No. Guys you couldn't be that could not be trusted in any situation other than to grab another by, guy by the collar and go sit in the box. Now you've got players that, yeah, no, they're tough. To be but fair to Brian but, Burke, he had the best ones. He did have the best <laughs> Yeah, he did have the. Even I mean, though, you look at that Anaheim team. You wouldn't have. You wouldn't. You would not have wanted to mess with that Anaheim no, Cup team. No, listen. If you're gonna, if you're gonna goon it up, you better have the best ones. Yeah, they did. They did. But it wasn't very effective. And if you look at at the Leafs since then, like think about their fourth lines, even through the Matthews era. Like what was it was Matt Martin and who? Oh man, on yeah. the fourth line, he was the designated tough guy, which I don't think works. No, and then they had they had you know Spezza for a few years there. 
which was fun. I didn't hate the when Clifford Spezza Simmons was running, like when they're all at their full powers. Uh, if they if they were uninjured, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what? So I'm just looking at the lineup and like the idea of a shutdown line. I my favorite version of it is Engvall Camp Yarn Croak. But here's the thing. He can still do that if he wants. Sheldon Keefe can just be like, okay, Kampf go out there this time. All right. You know what I mean? It, it's it's game one. There, there's going to be flipping. There's going to be flopping. A Kerfoot trade could still happen. Sure. Because uh, if stop, the way... Stop it. Stop, tra- stop trading Kerfoot. Well, no. But if he's the fourth line center... He's not. No, but if that flip happens and he's more regularly the fourth line center, then it could absolutely and happen. And then somebody gets injured and you're like, you know what? I wish I really had that Swiss Army And then Army he's right knife. back up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know think. I know I know people are exhausted by it, but like I don't I just don't I don't I don't, I don't see watch, how you trade him and get better. I don't right. want to watch Kerfoot and Nylander try to have chemistry again. <laughs> they don't yeah. whenever Tavares is out, it's like, oh, that second line is gonna be garbage. They yeah. don't work well together. But Nylander don't. Tavares Malgan is I'm, I'm that's a line you know what maybe Malgan's the center uh, uh if Tavares is out yeah. oh if Tavares is out well I it's, thought you are doing the Tavares is a winger no 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 no, no. <laughs> not yet well so I'm ag- another thing I'm looking at so Camp is wicked on faceoffs. I don't know if Obey Kubel or Aston Reese do much of that Engvall can take him Kerfa can take him Yarncroak can take him Malgan can take him, Tavares can take him, Nylander can take him, Matthews can take him, and Marner, he can't, but Mm -hmm. that's a shitload of guys who can take draws on a team that was already one of the best teams in the league at it. Listen, it's a great team. Leaf fans, just enjoy it. I know all that matters is how they do in the playoffs. No, this is going to be a fun year. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. You can't, don't wish the time away. You can't speed it up. Time is undefeated both ways. Both ways. You can't speed it up. It goes how it goes. It goes how it goes. So just enjoy it. Are we sure uh, we don't want to try Matthews and Willie again and Marner and Tavares? I think that if, Not you, yet. if you switch Not yet. Marner and Matthews up, um, I think you're going to have an angry Austin Matthews. And I think, no. I think Austin Matthews wanted to play with Mitch Marner for years. Babs wouldn't let them because Babs was, I think he was smart in one way in the sense that he was like, listen, I... I know that Nylander is going to do better with Matthews and Marner can handle things on his own. But also, uh, he was stupid because why wouldn't you put those two together, you imbecile? The, so The path to a solution is not to create a problem. Right. And Matthews and Marner is one of the most dynamic one-twos in the league. He scored 60 freaking goals. Uh, so it's up to Tavares and Nylander to be personally better and for Malgan to work better. Right. And we but, gave Edmonton shit for years for playing... Drysaddle and McDavid together the whole time, but it seems to have worked out for them. It's been okay. Well, it's just they didn't have anybody else to play for them. Well, it, right? do you take away from that strength or do you figure your shit out? Address your weaknesses elsewhere. And yeah. that's what they did. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Edmonton's found a way to not to pivot to them, but like they don't do that anymore because they got Hyman and Kane. You yeah. Know, they found solutions for that. So now you can have a dry Drysaddle line and a McDavid line and you're even more dynamic. And they're not expecting too much of Nuge. Like, what I always thought was because of his draft pick pedigree, it was always like, well, Nuge has got to be this star. Is this? And he's not a star. He's a very good player. And I think that Nuge, especially being healthy, I mean, for people in, inside Edmonton, you're probably like, what the hell is this guy talking about? But from the outside perspective, it was always like, hey, you know, stop expecting Nuge to be a 100-point guy. He's not. He's not, but he is a solid 65 he point was guy. Fantastic last season. Absolutely. And this is, this is I the like thing, the right? Playoffs, this is where the depth comes in and it's so important for the others. Uh, Vancouver uh, is even on the cap. That's un- unreal. I thought Alan Walsh of Agent Provocateur fame made a good point yesterday on Twitter saying, listen, I, like he's like the excitement of the NHL season shouldn't be who's compliant and who isn't. Yeah. <laughs> and he's right. Like, like we're like, we're celebrating this. Like, Steve, I think you retweeted Cap Friendly. It got like a thousand likes. And I'm like, this is the only, sp- like, do I don't ever hear about where the, I hope the Raptors are Cap compliant ever. In By the NBA, $4. they talk a lot about the uh, luxury tax. Right. And how much they go into that. Because it's way more fun to talk about a luxury tax. Yeah, because you don't have to be Cap compliant. That's you can just right. go over, right? So. It's, it's, it's all very. But Adam, only the same three teams win in the NBA. No, they don't. Milwaukee just won a championship. Excuse me. The Raptors, damn it. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, Raptors a much bigger market than Milwaukee. Yeah, but respectfully, Milwaukee's the, about five hundred thousand people. In the NBA, it's like, oh, they want the Raptors to fold so bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they want them to fold. They so want them bad. not to work. Yeah. Oh, it's, how uh, can we move them to give Houston a second team? I don't, I don't know. Like, just figure it out. By like, the way, they could, want them gone so could bad. Could baseball be happier that the Jays are out in two? They could not. <sighs> they I could did, not. I did like that this year they allowed the Canadian broadcast to be broadcast by people that cover the team because the last time it happened. The American broadcasts were happening, and one of the uh, broadcasters, when they showed a shot of Toronto, said, "Ah, oh, and there's the ocean outside of Toronto, because uh, he didn't know that Toronto's not a coastal city, even though it's a coastal Great Lakes city. Um, it's so not hard. It's not, but it's why look it up? Hard. And then he said afterwards, oh, I was kidding. We're like, okay. Um, Shut up. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. Make fun of yourself for God's sake. Yeah, I, I just get, let it go. I hate when guys don't tell the truth in those situations. Just shut up. You messed up. Give me, give me a storyline in the NHL this year that you guys are most excited about. The Leafs winning the cup. Uh, okay. Other than that, other than the prospect of the Leafs winning oh. the cup, which every year the Leafs have the chance, have a chance to win the cup. I want to know, and it could be Leaf related, but I'm sort of hoping, like NHL wide, what is the thing that you're like? I can't wait to follow X. Um, I want to see the under 25s of this league take over. Um, everyone's waiting for everyone's coming out party. Uh, Jack Hughes might be leading that list. You know, Matthews is still under 25. That's incredible. Um, I want to see if he can hit more than 60. Can he do 70? Can he do 70? Uh, Kale McCarr, can he go for a heart trophy? Um, there's, there's a, really good youth wave uh going on here in the nhl like the nhl as a uh as a product as a collection of athletes is extremely healthy you know like they're, they're it's a great product there are there are an enormous amount of uh you know problems surrounding the sport but as we have said many times it's not the sport that is under attack it's the culture around it once you actually you know, see the product on the ice. Holy shit. I don't think it's ever been better. Um, I talk about it in hat picks all the time is, you know, a guy scoring a between the legs goal is just Tuesday. It's just Tuesday. Guys do it all the time. I, uh, it used to just be like the super duper stars of the team. And we would see Matthew Kachuk do it in overtime and holy crap, uh, crap. That was crazy. And I'm not trying to dump on the guy, but like last year we had one from Tyler Mott. Like that's a great player. But you're not like, holy smokes, remember that Tyler Mott goal. Tyler Mott goal. He's, he's definitely going to light the Leafs up on Saturday. But uh, it's, it, I, I'm excited for, the, for the, the, youth, the youth of the league. Jack Hughes, Kel McCarr, Austin Matthews still somehow. Yeah. Keep yeah. the list going. Jesse, what about you? Uh, you mentioned what I was going to go with. I was going to go with uh, Kale McCarr Norris trophy season. I Heart. think. Heart trophy season. He won the Norris. Yeah. Or sorry, yeah, Norris. He already won that last year. Uh, Heart trophy season. Um, I think like this is the year. Like it's utter domination. Kale McCarr. You know, especially with them already getting the championship. Now it's kind of like that's monkeys off your back. You have a championship belt under. You have that. You know, you have a ring. It's it, now. It's just go out there and show that you're this superstar. So I think Kale McCarr is especially. Uh, we're gonna watch him for like game one all the way through eighty two. See if he can win the Hart trophy. And then, like, um, a lot of the team, the Canadian teams are very interesting this year because mm -hmm. Ottawa, all the spending they did, are they, what are they going to be? Um, Calgary, you know, you revamp your entire, your entire uh, first line. What is that going to be? And, like, um, Winnipeg, are they going to crush? You know, are they going to be awful? I don't know. It's, there's a lot of interesting storylines. If you go through the teams, there's every team kind of has a thing this year, which I don't think we usually go into the season expecting. Edmonton pursuing a cup. Yeah, I have a my thing is this. Every division has has a team where you have to ask, are you good or are you not good? <laughs> and anybody who tells you that they know the answers to these four teams is lying to you. All right. Hit me. In the Atlantic division, the Ottawa Senators. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, that's a fair one. You don't know. 
And by the way, we had, I thought we had a pretty balanced look at what the senators were going to be. And immediately looking, I was like, the one place I looked at the comments, I'm like, senators, if senators, if it's typical Toronto media, don't know anything about the senators. I'm like, yo, you still don't have any defensemen. We knew, we right. keep hearing on 32 Thoughts that they're going to make a trade for one. Until they do, they don't have any. Yeah, anyone who got mad at any preview video, your favorite team's going to do great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, like the fans is are that coming what you from wanted? a perspective is of they think, fans. they think they know. Like, they think they know my team is going to do well. And that's fair. And it's it's not fair because you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, especially with the Senators. Don't tell me. Listen, they are, are they improved? Yes. Are they playoffs? I mean, that's going to be a 40-point swing. They had 60-something points it's, last year. It is, it's super fair to say they can do it, but it's a lot. Mm-hmm. They can do it, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's and a lot. If if you could accurately cor- uh, predict sports constantly, you wouldn't be doing whatever You'd be you're a doing. Millionaire. You wouldn't be doing whatever you're doing right now. We don't know. We we gave our projections, and we're going to see how it right. plays out. And sometimes don't be so sure of your opinion. Sometimes teams with a lot of turnover struggle a bit, despite the collection of talent. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a really interesting story to follow. Yeah, because you got to gel, right? Yeah, it's an interesting story to follow in Ottawa and uh, to a similar degree, uh, Calgary. Um, we're uh, 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 in the Metropolitan Division. The are you good? Are you actually good team? There could be two, but I'm going to lean on one because they've fallen from grace lately. I think I know. And we've team. seen that they can be good. And that's the New York Islanders. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you good or are you not good? Because I could have said the Devils, but. They are coming from a place of they were horrendous last year. They so they kind of have three. I mean, are you talking about the Blue Jackets? No. Who are you talking about? Well, who are Caps? you talking about? Caps. Uh, well, I think the Caps are still good. Still good. They're Not good. Really? And that's what I'm asking. Are the Islanders good? A lot of injuries with the Caps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. But, uh, we don't know. So, and the, the, you don't know. Yeah. The Devils, the Devils are like, the, what's interesting about the Islanders is they're like, uh, Eastern, second round, third round completely out of the playoffs and there were circumstances leading to that but i just find it i think the islanders are going to be a team to sort of watch and be like are you actually good because they could be amazing i think they're going to be bad but that's just me um there's a lot of people jesse who would say on uh uh uh, speaking of teams that used to be good is the blues are the blues good because i'm shocked at the amount of low predictions from everybody from St. Louis. And again, this is a team that a few years ago won the a few years ago won the cup. A lot of the players that they won the cup with are still there. Mm-hmm. Including the goalie. And yet we wonder. I had them fifth. What did you guys have? I don't remember. Fifth I think division. I had them fifth. I think four amongst the Oilers, the Lightning, the Preds, and the Blues. The Blues are second in that they gave the Avs the best shot. Yeah. The best run at their money to eliminate them in the playoffs last year. That's true. Like I thought they had a better mm-hmm. showing than the than the Oilers did. In their yeah. series. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I thought it was a serious shot that they could have come away with um like an like who knows if if Bennington stays healthy and they get an they sneak out like game 6 or something like that. Who knows what happens in game 7. You know, remember we were talking about that and you were like you just don't want this to go to game 7 cuz oh, anything yeah. and the Avs took care of business. Yeah. But if that goes 7, who knows how we're looking at the Blues and they made a conference final. Yep, cuz so, it's just one game. I wouldn't be down on the Blues. They have a lot of talent. So the Blues They did lose Perron, but I, I I put the Blues at 5th oh, in my it. in my thing as well. Doesn't mean they won't make the playoffs, but 5th 5th is harder. Uh and then in the Pacific Division there's two teams I was looking at, but really I, I'm a believer in the Kings, so I'm going to take them off that list. I was shocked to see how many people had them low. I know. I think the, yeah. I actually think the Kings are really good. Um, uh, the Vancouver Canucks, they are the same lineup as last year, plus Ilya Mikheyev. And I, and I love Ilya Mikheyev. He did a great job. Yeah. Okay. Plus a new head coach. But, new, but, you know, but this is the for thing. For a full season. Literally. Yeah. And Dom, Dom said in his previews, like, are vibes enough? And sometimes they are. Yeah, I mean, look at how they did under Boudreaux. Right. Mm-hmm. Immaculate vibes. And the same team. So I'm, I'm curious to see what the Canucks actually are. Are you good or are you, I'm going to finish uh, 17th in the league? You can make the playoffs in 17th. I mean, you can. My, my whole point about the 17th is you're out of the 16 that made yeah. it. No. That's what I was trying to say. Uh-uh. Do no, you you butt actually me so hard yep. on that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, Wait, no, here, let me put on my glasses. Push them up. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you remember when the Canadians were the twentieth place team in the league and they allowed them to complete compete for a playoff 24th. spot? Fourth, twenty fourth in the man. bubble, and they said, "You know what? Let's include them in this thing." Remember pretty, when the Blackhawks Black were twenty third? 
We're 23rd, and <laughs> both of them made it. It was so dumb. They had no shot at making the regular season playoffs, but they said, you know what? Let's conclude them. I, neither did Columbus, who beat the Leafs. No, Columbus had a shot at the playoffs. Yeah, no, yeah. that that was valid. They fully, valid. They fully could have made the playoffs. They were the lower I, seed. Listen, yeah. no, it was valid that they, that Leafs team was weak anyway. I, I, that was Of the Leafs teams we've covered that were supposed to make the playoffs, that was the weakest. They, were they made me. Sweet. Yeah, they the, made me so mad. The 18, 19, or the 18, sorry, 19, 20 Leafs, right? Yeah. yeah what, weak. Uh, of the Matthews era, probably the most frustrating team we've watched. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. we overrated that team uh, in the beginning of the season with yeah. Babs and all that. Well, beginning it, of the season, yeah. it also no, didn't, I didn't help. I didn't. I the moment they lost to the Bruins, what did I say? Fire the guy. <laughs> Fire the guy. Oh, so we're just gonna sit here and wait until he. We should go back to that post mortem <laughs> show with CJ because I swear I said like, oh yeah, okay, so we'll just I mean, get fired in November. You did say that. I'm pretty sure you said that. Come on, I can't. I can't verify. I can. I don't have time to somebody go back. And watch. <laughs> That's a lot of content. Yeah, but the internet does. <laughs> Let's go. Go to imright.org. Um, Bill Burr owns I'm Right. Uh, congratulations to Colorado Avalanche fans. Uh, first off, I actually I want to shout one fan in particular out. Producer Drew, who starts with SDPN today. Oh, nice. Hooray. It's uh, Producer Drew's first what day. What did that happen? Uh, what is this? I know. Is a new hire? He what? announced it. Oh, oh my God. Follow him. When does he, he start? You should follow him. He, j- he starts today. Oh, I didn't he know. He has started already. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or no, he oh. should follow you. He told me the other day, he's like, I discovered I don't follow Jesse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, uh, yeah. I know. Uh, well, Not only is he bringing hire. his bad food takes and his bad team takes. Um, but he did, uh, uh, he did want to shed, yeah, I'm sorry. I wanted to give him a shout out. And also he I want the palate s- of an eight year old boy. I know it's weird, yeah. right? We need to have him on to talk about it a little bit more. Cause no, we don't. he's upsetting. It's upsetting Let's when I hear upset people, you don't think Let's, like, I'm going to make people really mad. Summer episodes. Counter. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> that's just a really good hire. I don't know, like the the collection of guys who decided to bring him over. Like they must be really. Is smart. it the greatest hire? <laughs> the greatest hire in all? Yeah, hires? it might, might be. be. Like is, put yeah. that on the Mount Rushmore of hires. Like yeah. I didn't know it was happening, and like whoever decided to hire him and like give him this job, like kudos to them. Pat them on the back. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Adam and Jesse. <laughs> and that's Behind why. Steve's back. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're giving him shit. <laughs> Jesse loves this. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I, know you do. I didn't even know he was starting today. It blew my mind. Anyway, we want to shout out Drew. And uh, we also want to shout out Avs fans who today are rejoicing. Not only because your team is really good and you'll probably repeat, but um, you're undefeated so far this year. And Blink-182 is reunited. And uh, and that oh. it, that's with the original lineup. Mark, Tom, Travis, the whole thing, and they're doing what? a full tour, and they come out with they're coming out with a new song, which is typical Blink One Eighty Two. It's called Edging. Uh, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> and they have a whole promo video, and it's about like, man, if they come, I'm gonna explode. And it's like a whole bunch of people talking about it. it's. It's very funny. It's very Blink. Some of you don't remember going over to your your friend slash neighbor's garage <laughs> in grade seven oh, and wow. listening to that whole album. And it shows. Uh, <laughs> sometimes Blink-182 videos will show up on like an Instagram page and some of the lyrics and people will be like, wow, people in the 90s were crazy. Like the, some of the lyrics they have are incredible. Uh, and uh, to me, take off your pants and jacket. That was the that was a defining moment in my life. I had the pants one because you remember you had your CD. It had the pants and the jacket and there, there was something else. I think it was a plane. I would take know. Off. I wouldn't know. You didn't have it? Went to Catholic school. You weren't allowed. So I went across the street to my despicable public school neighbors. (laughs) Well, look at that. You went into business with your despicable public school neighbor. I would also just like to say I did not have that as well. You didn't have a blink moment? No. Oh, okay. Well, I tell you, man, they were a big, big part of my childhood. Uh, How are they going to get Travis Barker to perform when he's going to be sucking Kourtney Kardashian's face the entire time? I know. I know they make out a lot. I don't. Do, if you, Man. I know you watch re- a lot more reality show than you shows than you let on. 
Yeah, uh, at least no, on this reality show. is fun. You've gotten me into so many, like selling Sunset and yeah. something. Jesse was the one that told me, and it's because of your partner Gabby. Yeah, we watched them together. So, do you watch? Have you been watching the new Kardashians? The one on Disney? No, we haven't watched okay. the uh, the new Kardashians yet. The old ones a little bit. Yo, is the new Kardashians it's, good? Not only is it good, it's gripping. Like it's well <laughs> shot. And when when Chloe finds out about Tristan Thompson, and I'm, I'm oh. looping the sports in about him having a, another baby with another sports. woman. <laughs> I was, it's like, he plays, just, sp- he plays them is the played. connection. You've just played. never, you've just never, it's crazy, crazy, crazy television. Crazy. Uh, and I know everybody hates me for saying it, but I, it's fantastic I'm television. Gonna, but I they are always, the two of them, the reason I bring them up is they're always making out. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and they're like, it's like they're out, they're, they're at like Thanksgiving dinner and they're just in the, and, it's, and she's you know, sitting it's on his like lap, tongue down his throat. year old. Yes. You know, it's Good on for that them. level. Good for them. I'm happy for them, <laughs> but it's a lot sometimes, you it's, know? It's, and I love a good makeout session in them, public. For them, not enough. Adam and I make out in public all the time. Mm. And people go, oh my God, that's Marilyn Dennis's son and that other guy. <laughs> and <laughs> that Yelly, Yelly Leafs guy. Yelly man. <laughs> no, that's, and Nasher. They call me Nasher, Nasher, and I'm like. Hey, is that Grav? Yeah, Nasher <laughs> gained a lot of weight, and I'm like, guys, that's not, it's. No, he didn't, and also hurtful. <laughs> Ow. Um, uh, I want to fight you on Selling Sunset. It's a good show. It's a good show. Oh, I'm trying to sell this house. <laughs> and, I, and I'm worried we can't sell this house. <laughs> and at the end of it, will they sell this house? Let's see, on Selling Sunset. That's what it is. No, Ooh, there's selling, drama to that. Selling Sunset was that, and then Selling Sunset just became the drama between the girls. Yeah, like Christine, not, Quinn, and everybody. It's not about the houses anymore. Oh, it's we're about, having a viewing today. I hope it goes well. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, it's we, always, we need more prosciutto <laughs> at the house for the viewing. And sparkling, you know, it, oh no, we need a rush. We need a rush order on pretentious glasses. <laughs> Can we get some pretentious glasses to put sparkling liquid in? <laughs> Yo, uh, when I watch Selling Sunset, all I can think is, man, living in LA sounds exhausting. Is that my California mm-hmm. accent? Yeah, it, like they're well, it's true. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. It's okay. It's good. It's uh, like half it's got to be you gotta like German. It's like uh, you got to watch the Californians a bunch of time uh, times yeah. on the Californians. This viewing is yeah. going poorly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your your Alan. It just needs a little bit of work. A little tweaking, but you yeah. can, it's gonna. It's there. You'll find it. Can we hear your Alan again? Is there? <laughs> can can no. Alan Walsh <laughs> sell Sunset? This house is <laughs> no. I can't. No, I can't it. It. It no, you're getting into no. it. <laughs> and make it and 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 he's and selling. I listened, and I he's selling to the, the Justin and Davis selling episode. the house to Gary Bettman. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't fucking do that. Good evening, you piece of shit. <laughs> that's Alan what didn't he say that. Him. He never said that. No, that's just me as uh, Alan okay. calling <laughs> I've Eventually, the impression is going to get so good, I can make Alan say anything. <laughs> You're gonna deep fake Alan with your with your impression. <laughs> Do you, have you guys seen those on TikTok where people will be like they'll make SpongeBob say anything because you can go on like a website and you just type in the celebrity voices? And no, they can, they can, I don't like the future. They'll be it'll be like uh, That's it's scary. It'll be SpongeBob rapping Travis Scott and it's just an AI that just. Uh, made it and punched it out oh Very man cool. no. yeah it's like it's kind of cool it is cool um uh the one thing that did freak me out uh and i didn't listen to this podcast but tj was telling me uh last week that he listened to a show because he's obsessed with sp- uh, space and he's obsessed with ai and uh i guess that they they had one of the google engineers on who since quit and ai has gotten to the point now where you can run tests on it but it asks for consent first it asks you to ask it for consent first. What? Huh? Yeah. And then we're talking about like, will AI, like, will, will, will AI ever terminate us? Will it ever get to the point where uh, it decides humanity's bad for the planet, which, you know, objectively we might be, um, and, and take over. And they said, well, we've, we've set the, s- the settings on it to please are so high that the likelihood of that is pretty slim. However, they are aware enough to, and they want to be considered, you know, a species or like a thing, like yeah, a like, like a being. Yeah, but like a glass of water exists. What if I throw a water a glass of water on the hard drive? I, how, listen, are gonna, how are you going to terminate? These are me? the debates of our time. This future is scary. You're right. 
I feel like I can. I don't know if you want that out there in the internet when the robots take I over, though, Jesse. I feel like I could defeat a robot real easily. See, <laughs> we, we're all sitting there watching the Terminator. Like this is one of the greatest cinematic achievements of our time. And you're just sitting there in the back of the theater yelling, yeah, but what if it rains? Right. <laughs> ah, they get rusty in the rain. Take that, T-1000. Nope. Tell me how this computer is going to survive uh, the Toronto winter when it snows uh, a lot. Oh, yeah, but, you know, a bunch of real estate agents trying to sell a house. <laughs> This is how they say um, house. You brought up right Agent Provocateur. We should shout out Justin Davis. Oh, an incredible episode. Okay. Great episode. I listened to it twice yesterday. So when, when Alan said he was gonna, we were going to have Justin on, he said this episode's going to be, he said you're going to hear some explosive stuff. And uh, he's never said that before with any of the guests we've had on. And there has been explosive this stuff. This is going to be bad. Yeah. Well, he didn't say <laughs> bad. He said explosive. And there was, it was interesting because Justin basically is coming out with a book. Uh, and it's about life, uh, his life, but life as a middle of the road player in junior he, in he, Canada. So he, uh, played in the OHL, won the Memorial cup, was drafted in the fourth round by the Washington Capitals right. in played 1996. With, played with Joe Thornton. Yeah. In, um, in the Sioux and right? Rick Jackman, I think as well. Um, yes, I think, I think that's what he said. So they, yeah. you know, and there's, there's everything in this, in this interview from, uh, how his concussion, uh, which happened in the United States, how the team tried to bill his parents for, for the hospital bills because he had bleeding on the brain. How they tried to get him across the border to avoid bills. That's right. Um, uh, then uh, he talks about uh, a particular hazing, hazing incident that is, it's such, an ex it's such an intense story. And I think his perspective on it's so fascinating because obviously he's the victim in this particular hazing incident. And the weird thing about it is he's, you know, there, there are, there are, there are adults on this bus where mm -hmm. this occurs, and it's the hot box thing. It, it, it happened with Akeem Alu, uh, uh, Akeem Alu, and we'll talk about Akeem Alu um, uh, later on in the show because we've we've got a topic there as well. Yeah. But it happened to him, and this also happened to Justin, and it's the the hot box one. Yeah, and I'll I'll let the inter the thing explain it. But he says, you know, my question is always like, well, we're, there are adults there. How is this happening? And his thing is, they're all junior hockey guys too. Yeah, they all played. This happened to them, so they see it as normal. And you kind of think, and, and, it, and then we sort of, we talked, we touched a little on Hockey Canada, but it really kind of brought things into focus for me as to why, if you're a part of something for that long, and there's a problem with the culture, it's almost impossible for you to even see that there's a problem, let alone begin to try to fix it. And your interview sort of starts with him talking about how he didn't understand the way these things he didn't understand exactly what was happening to him at the time because he was so immersed right, in you're the part culture. Of it. And then he'd be talking to someone, he'd be talking to a civilian because they, they talk about how they talk, um, they refer to non-hockey players as civilians. Um, and he'd be telling a story and they'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? That's crazy. Yeah. But then there's also the invert, like he does have some good stuff in there and, you know, hockey, uh, you know, didn't do very right by him in a lot of respects, but also Brian Kilray, who's a hockey lifer. He was a coach in uh, of the Ottawa 67s for literally decades. Uh, saved his life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, dude, really good job from uh, the, the both of you on, on that episode. They're all good. Mm -hmm. All the episodes are good, but this one is, uh, awesome. it's particularly eye-opening. And, and I think it's the, it's the give and take of, of hockey right now because we all love the game. Love it. It has given us so much. Like, look at the three of us, right? Look at what talking about hockey gives us. And, you know, and and they, and they I have lifelong friendships from when I played. Now, I never played at a high level. I was like house league single A guy. But lifelong friendships um, because of hockey. But at the same time, all of these bad things are happening too. And that's sort of where he kind of, Justin's really good at sort of saying, there's this, and then there's this. And he said, that's the, that's why it's a bit of a mixed bag right now. It's a bit of a weird relationship. And I think uh, the more conversations we have about this, the more we can kind of get this out there. We can move past it, fix it, move, move forward to the point where we're not having to talk about these things anymore because they're not happening as right. much. And I think like that's why the, ep the episode is so important and the book Justin Davis wrote because he was on it to promote yeah. his book, Conflicted Scars. And I think th they're both very important because for an outsider, 
to learn these things about how major junior hockey works a it's civilian. fucking it's eye-opening like it's wild the the stories he has are like must hear must read and then for people who are going into that uh pursuit like if you're chasing nhl dreams if you're a parent for a kid who is going to go away to play major junior hockey it's also a must read and a must listen because you need to understand what's going on in that world and the underbelly because like as somebody who never played a high level of hockey or it'd be in i was completely outside of that world growing up i i had no idea these things were going on and like still to this day like until i heard justin talk about uh st- stuff like the hot box like you never know that these things are happening to kids who are 14 and 15 and 16 they're yeah. and they're being harassed and hazed and th- they think it's so normal and then this this is the view of the inside of the hockey world and the underbelly that they all think this is just normal stuff. The beer one. The uh, the beer uh, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, listen to the episode, man. Also, uh, uh, one of Alan's first clients. Like, mm-hmm. he just mm-hmm. signed with Alan. I think he was his third client ever. Alan so, said he had nothing to prove to Justin's parents. He just had his word that he would just try as hard as he could. He's yeah. like, I have no resume. I have no other clients. I j- can just say I'm going to try really hard because I really want to be a, an agent. Yes. And, and if, they believed him yeah. and look at him now. And if you've ever wanted a vivid visual of Alan Walsh in cowboy boots, <laughs> <laughs> you're in for a treat. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, thank you for the shout on that, Steve. That's yeah. great. It's a, it's a very, episode. it was a very interesting episode to be a part of. And uh, some of the, some shocking moments, some really funny, some good levity in it. Um, okay. So listen, when we when we talk about this stuff, um, I take no enjoyment bringing up Steve Simmons' name. We've talked about this guy on the on the show before. He's been on our show. That was eight nine years ago now. Uh, like our first 13. season, it was about an analytics debate. It wasn't anything. But what's been interesting about Steve Simmons is he went from guy who has controversial slash kind of shitty takes just in general, like pot shot, cheap shot kind of journalism to oh flat out you just are not down with what's happening right now. And it goes back to, I think the the turn must have happened before this, but where I first noticed it personally was when he was talking to Masai Ujiri and he was talking about a particular charitable initiative, initiative that the Raptors were doing. And he said to Masai something about gun rights or gun, uh, gun uh, violence, gun violence and why, why the Raptors aren't doing something to address that. Mm-hmm. And I it, vaguely remember and like why that. they aren't when it happened during the pandemic, right? It was on it was all on Zoom, so a lot of these things sort of get lost because it was the pandemic. We all lost a lot of uh, like memories, brain cells, brain cells. Honestly, so I, that first hearing that, and that was I th- believe their bubble playoffs, and and that I thought was like okay, so we know where you stand on this, um, because it's like well, why? Oh, the Raptors are donating to charity. Why not the gu- anti gun charity? Well, Steve, why? Uh, why do you pick that one in particular, Steve Simmons? Did, did you ask the Leafs? That's the question. So, and, and again, this is something you got to remember that this guy really likes it when you don't like him. And the whole strategy is, let me put something in there that, that pisses you off and you'll click my article a bunch of times and our advertisers will be extremely happy. If you're asking why the Toronto Sun likes this guy, he generates a ton of controversy, which generates a ton of clicks, and he represents a viewpoint that uh, of a lot of people. Scarily enough, there's a lot of people who agree with and believe exactly what Steve Simmons said in his here and there um, column on Sunday this week. Um, and it's unfortunate because it really, uh, I- I'm just pulling it up right here, Jesse, unless you have it right in front of you. Um I read the quote. I haven't watched uh, Akeem's video yet. I assume we're going to play that. Mm -hmm. So here's what I have. Okay. So here's what he wrote. No one wants to say this because of the political, politically correct police and all, but those who coached Akeem, uh, it's Akeem Alou. I I guess I keep saying Ali. I apologize. Those who coached Akeem Alou must cringe every time they see him in a news report or uh, a commercial talking about what's wrong with hockey like he would know. By my count, Alou played for 23 teams in nine different leagues in 12 professional seasons and rarely finished any season with the same team he started with. What if, uh, what if that was color related? Uh, sorry, if that was color related, how is it that Wayne Simmons just spent 
the same 12 seasons playing in the NHL. It's a, it's a really confusing quote and it's really, it just shows an ignorance. It just shows an ignorance. Sure. Frankly, because the, <laughs> like it, he has not been paying attention, like willfully has not been paying attention to anything Akima Lewis said. I don't know how you can have a problem with the things he says when you don't pay attention to them. Because if you're like, wh which coach, Steve, are, are we talking about uh, Bill Peters, uh, the coach who called him the N word? Are we talking about one of the coaches or trainers with the Colorado Eagles that showed who, up in blackface, who showed up to a Halloween party dressed as him? Are we talking about, uh, there was another one in there. There was a third one in like there. He mentions it actually in the video and we can play it if well, you want. There you yeah, go. We so, but like, I'm not trying to, I like, you know, no, 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 no. but I, it's like, I, there's so many, there's too many to even remember off the top of your head. Yeah. Like that's coach, a point right in itself. Coaches didn't do right by this guy. Like, so what I don't understand the point he's t trying to make other than pointing his middle finger at Akeem and saying, fuck you. Right. And, like, the motivation for writing this was seeing Akeem on TV and in commercials trying to make the game a more inclusive place. Like, that offended you so much you had to go put it in your Sunday column. You had to go write a paragraph about it because you saw somebody trying to make hockey a safer space for everyone. There's like, other what, guys what is hurt. wrong with you? I don't... Why is that... Yeah. Why is somebody trying to open the game to more people offend you? Yeah. Why, see, does, why do you have to say it makes people cringe? Steve, I, Steve, I don't understand what you were trying to do with this. I, what the fuck, man? Well, and, and also, let me say this. Uh, it, it, I think it's interesting that he goes, uh, um, those who coached Akimalu must cringe every time they see him in a news report. I don't think we care who coached him or how what their experience was oh the other one was the coach who let the team captain beat the shit out of a 16 year old came aloof oh yeah yes right no no that coach must cringe well a matt yeah like oh man bill peters who has to coach in russia now right where they'll just i'm sure he's cringing i'm sure yeah. bill Ke peters is not cringing uh because bill peters really fucked up and was shitty on several instances not just akeem but also there was, there's stories out there about that guy. And I have to be honest, man. Which which pal are you serving right now, Steve? Right. No, right. the only person who has a problem with Akeem and what he's doing with the HDA is Steve Simmons for a reason we don't know. Well, well, I think which we do, friend are you doing a favor? I, I think we can guess. That's what I want to know. I think we can guess. Uh, and the guess? guess is that, first off, there's an audience for that, that will read that, that will like that. And the Toronto Sun does serve that. I think we know that. Um, I also think that Steve has been in the game long enough to know a lot of people. And I think there are a lot of people who do cringe when they see Akeem Alou on television. I think Steve here is making a point that is truthful, which is invalid. And what I mean by that is I think there's a lot of people in the game who think Akeem Alou, bad guy even now. And that's the problem. Sources say. Yes, that's the problem. And if you, I think we got to, we can play the video now because I'm, I'm, we've delayed that long enough. But I, I think you got to listen to his words a little bit here. Hear the other side and then I'll read Wayne Simmons tweets. Thanksgiving to you all. Just wanted to make a quick video to address the comments made by Steve Simmons of the Toronto Sun earlier today. Obviously being in this space, there are times that people say negative things about you, but you find a way to let it go. But this one got me good. This one got me at my core. Only reason I'm addressing this is because it's all over the internet. I've seen Steve talk negatively about me for some time now, and the funny thing is I've never spoken to him or met him in my life. I actually found out about what he said through other members of the Hockey Diversity Alliance. People like Steve are what's wrong with society. This is the first time in history the crucial conversation of race is prevalent in hockey, and I believe my story and what the HDA is doing is a major reason for that. You have absolutely no clue, Steve, what I and my family have been through both physically and emotionally since I started playing hockey and the scars it has left. When I showed this to my dad, he literally broke out in tears. This is a man who didn't own a pair of shoes till he was 16 years old growing up in Africa and delivered pizzas as my mom cleaned hotel rooms to get me by in this game. My dad who was with me literally an hour ago at an HDA grassroots event to promote diversity in the game in underserved communities. He's still giving back after all the years of pain trying to navigate a sport he didn't fit into. It's so clear what you're trying to do, and that is to divide us. But what you don't realize is that this unites us and makes us stronger. The real question here is, are you saying there's no racism in the game with everything that's gone on? What actually are you trying to do by comparing myself to Wayne, who is actually an incredible leader in the space and is promoting the same message as I? 
What coaches are you referring to? Guys like Bill Peters? Are you saying I didn't get called to get sent down to the East Coast League when I was actually leading my AHL team in scoring in my first professional season? Are you saying I wasn't hazed in my rookie year in the OHL, made to strip naked in a bathroom of five other men and afterward got my teeth cross-checked out for not wanting to do it again and then subsequently getting blackballed by all of Hockey Canada as I watched my stock drop? Are you saying I didn't have a trainer walk into a team party with my jersey and blackface and then afterwards I asked for a trade? Are all those instances my doing? Because that is how the hockey establishment made it to be. If you actually did some real journalism, you would know that the Chicago Blackhawks management team that did everything in their power to bury me came out. Out of that organization came out five National Hockey League GMs. That's close to 20% of the league at the time. Countless others went on to scout and have other management positions. You're a racist and you're an arrogant. And you have zero credibility and respect from even your own peers in the media space and athletes alike. And if the Toronto Sun had any integrity whatsoever, you would never write another column again. Once again, I'm going to tell you, you will never divide us. We're just going to be stronger together. Holy shit. Uh, wow. Wayne Simmons wow. was pretty pissed off, too. Mm-hmm. He uh, should be. Uh, yeah, because it's like, why are, you, why are you bringing me up? And again, uh, this, is how, this is how you... Um, this is how you demean people. Hey... Uh, athlete that didn't make it, who has uh, who has a particular skin color. Why don't we compare you to athlete who did make it of that same particular skin color? I, I don't know why he chose to. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what he thought he would gain by picking another member of the Hockey Diversity Alliance and be like, "See, well, see? so uh, Wayne Simmons black tweeted, guy made it. You can make it." Yeah, Wayne Simmons fuck? tweeted, just a quick message to the hockey world. I usually don't have time for this, but tonight I do. I really appreciate uh, what you're trying to do, Steve Simmons. Your article was asinine and in no way reflects the real plight of myself, Akeem, or other what other players of color go through. You are minimizing the pain and suffering uh, and dismissing the actual fight that we as people actually have to endure just to even be accepted in the game of hockey at a lower level, never mind the professional ranks. In, in caps, do not ever. Use my name or any other player of color's name and try to make your point. We will no longer sit quietly as our characters are assassinated, Steve. This will only make us stronger and speak out against people of your nature. If you were trying to be cool or funny, you missed your mark. You've been warned. P.S. This is me being nice. And I want you guys to know, too, that Steve Simmons tweeted at Wayne Simmons today. Doubled down, I saw. And said, I supported you. And sent an artic- a link to his article where... Steve was uh, writing about Wayne Simmons hitting a thousand games in the NHL. Yeah, you wrote about him kindly, which like... Because that was the story, because Wayne was going to get a thousand games in the NHL. Yeah, the tweet was, at Simmons17, must have forgotten this, and it's just a link to uh, Steve Simmons saying, Wayne Simmons, remarkable and unlikely journey to a thousand NHL games. I don't know what you think that affords you. Like it's like me giving Adam a cookie and then slapping him in the face. Like right. I gave oh, you a cookie, though. I gave you a the week like, that a leaf hit a thousand or a leaf hit a thousand games. He wrote about how that leaf hit a thousand games. Like he can count. Like woo, and it is a great story. Wayne Simmons does have a great story, but that is in one bucket, and over here in this bucket are the comments about Akeem Alou, the comparison to Wayne Simmons, and the fact that. Uh, you. Who are you trying to please here? And I think it goes back to what Steve says. Are you are you trying to please your sources? Is that what it is? Is this a text conversation you were having with somebody while you're watching a preseason game? And you're going, oh, I cringe whenever I see this guy. And and Steve goes, oh, really? Why is that? Well, he was this. He was that. He was this. He was that. Yeah, you know what? And you hear that enough, and then he prints it. But we like, and it it all it all goes back to ignorance and like all these things that we've covered. So right. So. He was talking about the the three most high profile incidences that happened to him: Windsor, uh, uh, Colorado, and uh, and uh, Rockford. He he talked about those. Those three are just things. the top three. But he was talking about the Chicago management team and how they spread through the NHL. And we talked about the network of whispers and how that spreads. And I mean, for everyone who has that information you took the bait hook line and sinker and and this is part of part of the criticism of not just hockey but like sports journalism is you just hear something from someone and go well that's the thing 
uh, someone told me this guy is difficult. Someone told me this guy has a good shot. Someone told me, have you ever been told something about a player and then watch them and gun that? I don't know what the hell that person's talking about. Mm-hmm. It's a microcosm of that. Um, like you gotta, like, you can't just regurgitate the information you get, you're given. You have to research this at any base level. And I think, I think what's upsetting about Akima Lu's story is he's the one who had to tell it. Mm. Because I think if we did a better job in sports journalism, and maybe this is me talking out of school because I've never done it, never lived it, but Akima Lu shouldn't have been the one to have to tell all those stories. We should have known about Rockford. We, the only reason we knew about Windsor is because it was on camera. And we should have known about Colorado. There was a picture. Mm-hmm. There was a picture probably posted on like Instagram. And or really, Facebook. it was probably a little more pre social media. Like the, the, we're a little more, not, not that it did happen pre, pre social media, but like there was stuff that everybody used to post on Facebook and think it would be gone or that we would forget or whatever. And it's all come back now. Now we, I think, understand the internet a little differently. Things spread differently. Um, issues that were perhaps just not talked about, clearly not talked about. I, re- I remember being very confused reading that story going, I don't understand how Akeem will lose the bad guy. Yes. All right. And yes. w- what's so upsetting about Steve Simmons is too, is that we've been making progress on these incidents in the, in the culture within hockey over the last couple of years. Like there's been actual kind of like, okay, there's conversations happening now. We don't look at Akeem as a problem in these situations. We look at the people who were above them and and managing them and the racist things they did. And we say, no, this was a kid just trying to play hockey and look at the racist thing that happened to him. And there was progress being made. And Steve Simmons just wasn't there for any of that, just chose to pretend like all of that stuff didn't happen, try and take us back to this to this area where we're like, no, he, he's a problem. And, th- and this black kid trying to play hockey, like he's, he's, he's the problem here. Like it's a step backwards and it's so upsetting. I think uh, a lot of people get called racist these days or either you are a racist or you did, you're not necessarily a racist, but you did something racist and it just bounces off of them. What I would say is if you're immune to that sort of criticism at, at, best at kindest this is lazy sloppy ignorant work that should be beneath anyone employed to write for a living um yeah i, I don't i don't know what to what to give you beyond that i i don't know what he's been listening to over the last like decade you know like where have you been he prepared us he prepared us like all of this right now that's happening he prepared us for it with mm-hmm. the first sentence mm-hmm. So it built in to his criticism that comes out of nowhere is the fallout and it makes it seem ridiculous and unjustified, mm-hmm. but oh, it's the politically correct police. Well, you can't just do whatever the fuck you want, Steve. <laughs> like, yes, we live in a free society, but it's not free from consequences. You can't just do whatever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. And this is why I think this is all premeditated. It was fantastic promotion for him. He is trending as of this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, he's getting a ton of hits on this article. Um, he got one former NHL player and one current NHL player to weigh in. I would tell you, and, and, and he got, uh, he would point the politically correct police thing at a conversation like what we're having right now. Um, and, and I would say, honestly, I think he got what he wanted. And I think here's, here's the best thing you can do with this guy. Mm-hmm. This guy in particular, ignore, yeah, ignore this person. I think what you, well, how you started this conversation when you brought up Simmons uh, asking Masai the question about gun violence in Toronto, and then that sparked a whole debate about how like Kyle Dubas isn't being asked about gun violence in Toronto and all that discourse there. It's it, and then he went at, if you remember, he went at Kayla Gray, and he he asked her if she had a comprehension problem. Do you remember on Twitter? Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Oh, wow. No, I'd forgotten. Yeah. But right. I remember now. And yeah. I think I think it's important to bring up these instances because these are just like checkpoints of down the list and that he he's done this before. And that that moment, you remember we talked about Steve for like weeks there, because that, that was a controversy that he kept doubling down on. And then that Kayla Gray incident on Twitter happened like 
I don't know, a couple days after the Messiah one, then the Steve Simmons conversation kept happening. This isn't a person who's going to learn and grow. They figured out that we can antagonize black people and I'm going to get a lot of attention for it. So I assume he's going to try it again if, if he wants to down the road. But he's, this, isn't, this is a lost cause here. Nobody's changing this man's mind because he can get a lot of attention from this. And like you just said, the best thing right now is to ignore him. And I wish people would deplatform him and not give him the avenue of like Toronto Sun and a, a newspaper to write in. But he's not learning. There are fabulous, fabulous sports writers who are not working right now. Fabulous, amazing pros uh, who who are um, dedicated to telling great stories. And then there's this. But again, because it spreads like wildfire, and as we know from like the various documentaries on Netflix, controversy is the thing that sells. The thing that divides is the thing that gets the most clicks. Until we can break ourselves of that, there's going to be guys like this who are absolutely reveling in it. And I do not believe for one second that that was in there for any other reason other than to generate a ton of clicks. And I actually do think, sounds like he believes it because he, he, he kind of said as much. Here's what's confusing to me. I don't think it generated a lot of clicks. The, the reason this spread is because one person read it, screen grab, uh, grabbed it, and it spread on Twitter. I didn't see anyone sharing the link. I agree, but I still think people would have... It would have. I, I can. I would put money on that mm -hmm. having a, a bump. I went it. to it to read the see if there's more. You yeah. know, outside the screenshot. Well, I like, well, and I'm, I'm looking at talk it, about it right now. You know? I'm looking at a Daily Hive article by Adam Lascaris, who we know. Yep. And it has to link through to the Toronto Sun article for context. Mm -hmm. So it's there's the link there. And like the trending all day on Twitter stuff that you brought up, like that means something to him. <laughs> I assume yeah. in the well, Sun, he wants to. Well, he wants his name up there because then people click on it on Twitter and mm -hmm. go, "Why is Steve Simmons trending?" He's been around for so long and done so many things. You can be trending for something else. Right. And, and here's the other thing. Like, there's still 70,000 people following the guy. And I know there's a lot of people hate following the guy. Like, uh, like I can't stand this guy. Like, and I'm following him because I want him to fuck up. Stop doing that. That's Don't just, do that to yourself. That's bad for your health. Drop Don't him. do that shit. Something, Drop Don't something, hate follow people. Something that I think he could have potentially written about, and it would have been uh, <laughs> not racist frankly and but still on brand is how could the Leafs put wayne simmons on wings? you know what i mean and he could talk about the lack of grit on this team like which i think we would all expect simmons is going to the marlies and clifford is going to the marlies and what use is it to your team if all of your organization's toughness is down in the american no, this, hockey league this had nothing to do with simmons and the leafs this had to do I with know. akeem Ali, uh, alu like trying to make the game better and him uh, but if he wanted to play from, to that base the toronto sun like sure, there's a knuckle million, buster base there's a million different ways he could have gone about it yeah. but this one th that one we're not sitting here talking about it's it just a cheap mm -hmm. shot he went for the lowest the lowest denominator and just said i'm gonna go here yep it's awful yeah man that's terrible uh, like completely unprovoked like it's it's just it's really confusing it's really confusing steve and i'm waiting now i'm waiting for the phone call and i'm waiting for you know because it's this is all whispers behind the scenes about akeem Alou. i already know people talk shit about this show we we know all too well uh and sometimes we hear about it and, and now, we hear who and now i'm and now i'm just waiting oh well whatever I now i'm care. just waiting and for if any of you are listening to this right now, don't waste my time. If you contact me, tell me what you're mad about. Come to me with something specific. Try to change my mind. Don't waste my time and just yell at me because yeah. I'm a grown up now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. A lot of people think I'm still fucking 19. Come to me with some actual feedback or don't call me at all. Okay. There you go. Do you want to do a press conference? Yes. Let's do it. If you were to say, if you answer this question, it's a tricky one, without getting too personal, why would you say to somebody trying therapy is a great option? Because it makes your head feel better. Is that how you, is that, is that the generic way of saying <laughs> that? No, what I would say is it makes life easier to navigate. Right. Right. Jesse, what about you? Um, we always use, use this example, but like you should exercise and take care of yourself and uh, we, we've discovered over the last uh, number of years that your mental health is a part of that. Mm -hmm. It's just as important as your physical health. 
So you need therapy if you might need therapy to help your mental. You might want therapy. Yeah. And this is the thing about therapy is you don't have to need it for it to be beneficial. Sometimes you just want it. And sometimes you feel a little bit more like yourself or you want to. You want to feel a little less stressed. You want to feel a little more confident. You want to help. I mean, God, who doesn't have tricky family situations that they need to negotiate? And, you know, you're trying to figure out relationships that are 40 years old. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to check out BetterHelp dot com slash sdp today to get 10 percent off your first month remember better help is a great option it's convenient it's accessible it's affordable you can get matched with the therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time when you find somebody that you vibe with then you'll want to stick with them it's better help better b-e-t-t-e-r h-e-l-p dot com slash sdp for 10 percent off your first month guys i've asked you this before i'm gonna ask you again are you taking care of them are you, are you going to work in like Turkey into this one? Is it going to be Well, no, because themed? Thanksgiving. <laughs> Canadians, Canadians have already done Thanksgiving and then you've got American Thanksgiving in six yeah. weeks. And we don't really even care about Thanksgiving. Canadians? Like, it's not I, like, I enjoy it. Yeah. But like American Thanksgiving is way bigger and better. Uh, and I you want to make sure. for breakfast. There you go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and while you're consuming <laughs> that turkey, as, as he, he wants to... He you're wants me to stuffing square and pig round hole this. Yeah. You might want to check out the Platinum Package 4.0. In fact, when American Thanksgiving rolls around, that's when you start thinking Christmas gift. Platinum Package 4.0. With this glorious package, you can align your entire hygiene routine in one swoop. Inside is a 10-part Platinum Package. Everything you need to know and everything you need to perform, plus some shower goodies and elevating your grooming game. Yes. Would you say the Manscaped 4.0 would carve your turkey? I would say. It would not. No nicks. No, no nicks on your butter balls. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, <laughs> go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com when you use that promo code DANGLE. Manscaped, clear out the leaves. It's your tree trunk's time to shine. Cook that bird. Cornucopia on, on your scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> what a bet. Yes, Wanna? That meant, yes, yeah. Listen, Less you, threatening. You can do it at Sports Interaction. It's Canada Sportsbook. Football is in full swing. Baseball playoffs. Still going for Not, not for, for the us. Jays. No. Thank you, Jesse. The hockey season, which starts this week, is fabulous as well. We've got a ton of props that we're going over with David Bassel, but you can bet pregame, you can bet live and play, uh, or one of the many prop bets, which we've brought up before on the show, made for Canadians by Canadians. Sports Interaction makes it easy for you to deposit, to play, and to cash out. Join now and see all that sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash STPN. That is sportsinteraction.com slash STPN. Thank you. Ontario only 19 plus. Please play responsibly. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. I got some feedback. How come I haven't been invited to your new house yet? You, you were invited and you didn't show up. I wasn't. I wasn't here. we pa- I was in Mexico. We're painting the. That's main, not true. We're painting the main floor this week. So do you want to come after we paint the main floor? Just want to. Do you want to come before we is paint that, the main is floor? Is that is that a? I mean, is that answering my question? You're invited today. You want to come today? I can't come today. Oh, 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 it's Steve's fault. You're a piece well, of he, shit. And not the guy who's just super busy. <laughs> just want to know because I've seen all these videos and I'm really excited and I want to. I'm like. Is he going to invite me? <laughs> you know what? You can come over and hang some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's yeah, taking forever. <laughs> Honestly, moving sucks. The next time I move, I'm like, I want to be here for 20 years. I hate it. Moving day is not a thing. Moving day is a lie. Moving months. Moving month. Yeah. At least month. Um, okay, Jesse, first question. Uh, I have a really good um, stump the Steve for you on Wednesday. Ooh, I like I'm it. very Tomorrow. excited. That's yeah. right. We should tell you. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow we got a show. Friday we got a show. And we're going to announce our entire Game Over team oh, tomorrow yeah! for all Let's seven Canadian cities. We've got new hosts in every city except for Montreal because that old curmudgeon is uh, <laughs> hanging on for 82 games along with... Uh, I, I, he's got some some really great fill-in hosts as well, but we'll talk about that. Mark Dumont among them. Uh, exactly. Uh, Jay Baruchel coming, coming up on-, on Game 1. Actually, Wednesday tomorrow. Yeah, Jay Baruchel will be on our, our Game network. Over. I hope with he actually Andrew shows Berkshire. up. Yeah, I hope he, he actually did. shows up. He was supposed to do a stream with me, and he never showed up. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> he likes Andrew more. Yeah, I think so. So uh, Jay Baruchel on Game Over Montreal tomorrow, and we'll talk about that more. Uh, a lot of goings on on the network. Very fun. 
Uh, Steve, this one's from AWP Zoomer. They yes. write, so Steve, when are we getting a continuation on the Red Dead Redemption oh 2? Yeah, God. when are we getting that? Leave me alone. <laughs> You said. I know. I know what I summer, said. I know do, what I said. Oh, I'm going to do a 72 hour stream. I'm Steve. I'm just not what a happened? S- smart man. What happened? Life. So much of it. <laughs> a staggering amount of life. I do plan on doing it. Um, it may not be as soon as you like. It's going to happen. I still watch, I obsess over Red Dead content. I watch it every single day and I want to create some, but I don't know if you noticed the season's about to begin. You got stuff to do? Yeah, just a little bit of stuff. Moving right before the season was a, it was, it was a choice. It was a choice. Well, it was a choice for my wife. I just sort of went on. <laughs> I just went along with it. It was a choice for her. Okay. It was more assigned to me. Um, we'll we'll get it done. Okay, we'll get it done. Don't you worry. All right. Uh, the NHL season actually opened up on Friday and Saturday. What did you guys think of the global series that went on Nashville versus San Jose? Got like no coverage. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who won. I saw Timo <laughs> Meyer who's Nashville on my games. fantasy team. Oh, there you go. Timo Meyer's on my fantasy team. I saw he had five penalty minutes. I'm like, oh, are you getting a fight? Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything about it. No, it was it was super poorly promoted up here. Like, I mean, maybe I mean, uh, was it drowned by the Jays in the postseason? Perhaps because it was. Perhaps. When did they, when did they play Friday, Saturday? Yeah, Thursday, and they Friday? but those were afternoon Friday, games. Saturday. Like they could directly because the the Jays because they were a Canadian team have to play in the afternoon. But the games for us were starting at noon, mm-hmm. so you could have watched hockey and then baseball. But they just weren't really well promoted. Honestly, they just were sort of an afterthought. Also the pr- like, it's also a fart lineup. Like it, it's not like the Preds are cool, but like San Jose's garbage. And it's I don't know, but like, it's like they're tra- like so, I want to watch a team that very definitely isn't going to make the playoffs take on a team that lost in four games in the I, first round. I think like are we kidding? Have- Is that that's what we're doing? No, they they set a, over specifically for Hurdle, you know, and and all the yeah. hometown born. Uh, guys, I you know? know it's just a, it is it's a bad watch. Come on, guys. no, you could have done you could have done Colorado Tampa. I don't think it would have done much better. Mm-hmm. Um, it's dude, we're in Canada. It, it's difficult to make people care about an early October game between the Sharks and Preds. I mean, just because, like, yeah, you're if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I'm interested, yeah, because you're a sick puppy, and we're like, there's a lot of sick puppies. We'll listen I, to the show. I was interested. People who work in hockey were like, "You, you've been watching the preseason. <laughs> Go to the doctor." <laughs> like, no, it's oh, true. Okay. No, I, I was inter- I, I, what I like it, but to expect, but like objectively, it's not the greatest matchup. It's just not. No, no, and like the interesting pre- color skin. The preseason <laughs> was going on like that day. It was just yeah. it was such a weird dynamic, you know. And yeah. with the Blue Jays, and then. The Leafs have a like a Red Wings game that night, and you're like, but like I'm not spending my time at, at noon on Friday watching this hockey game. Mm-hmm. It was like, odd. In Finland, uh, the year before, or two years before, it was yes, there were premier Finnish superstars. It was Patrick Laine, it was uh, Sasha Barkov, but it's the Jets and Panthers. Mm. So I don't know if those. I don't think those events are built for us. No, yeah, I, they're, they're, I think you're right about that. It's yeah. like the All Star Game. The All Star Game is an unbelievable local event, right? On TV, eh, it comes and goes. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. I imagine it went over like like a it did really well in the Czech Republic or mm-hmm. Czechia. Uh, the Finnish one, I think it went over great in Finland and in Canada. Didn't really play. Meh. There you go. Uh, what I want to know is, do my Timo Meyer points, because he had an assist, do they carry on into week one? They have to. Yeah, week one started Friday. Okay. Yeah, fantasy. I've been, I've been fucking up on that. Had to make sure all my lineups were set. Well, now I gotta, now I gotta look. Shout out uh, Rob Plums, Plumster Good job. on Twitter. I just retweeted your tweet. Um, Rob has compiled all of our predictions. Oh, 
<laughs> Someone does this every year. He's it, retweeted it right now. Yeah, I just retweeted it. Uh, he said, "No one, not no idea if anyone else tracks this." So I decided to do. So I decided to and post this for the season. Not the best, but it's something uh, at us. No, it looks great, Rob. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Um, it's all of our predictions from our season previews and all of the division standing. Thank you, Rob. Really appreciate that. If you want to go follow along, it's on the screen right now. Uh, go to Rob's Twitter. You'll see it there. I'm uh, excited to see which of Adam or Jesse comes in second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go to the at SDPN Sports Twitter. I'll retweet it there. And you go see it. That's All my fun. predictions were great. They were, they might have been the best predictions you've ever done. Ever. They uh, might be. You never know. I don't know. Anybody you're immediately, I want to take that back? No. No. I mean, no. There were split decisions. Like Detroit, Ottawa was tough. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm wishy washy by nature. So I said all of that in the videos. People talked like I had hard and fast. What do you mean, Steve thinks the senators are going to suck? I, I spent most of the video talking about how they're good, actually. It, listen, it's an incredible league. It's an incredible league with like three floaters. That's basically it. <laughs> Did you see the game? I want to say it was Arizona Vancouver, where Vancouver outshot the Coyotes 32 to 7. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. <laughs> It was preseason, to be fair, but yeah. like that's, so I think what? that's what we can expect from the regular season from Arizona. Um, you guys also heard that report from Kiprios about the, the players not being very happy down there. I did see that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's oh, a but college Jesse, campus. No, Jesse, it's going to be great. What do you... <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's going to be weird. Shut up, man. Shut up. It's going to be weird when someone plays like the first five years of their career in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And then goes somewhere else. And we learn their name. And they're like, oh, this is what like a home locker room looks like. Yeah. And we learn their name. Shut yo, up. yo, I know, <laughs> it made the, I know it made the rounds on TikTok last week, but man, the Calgary dressing room is pathetic. Uh, oh, I don't know. Seen oh, Flames. Oh, I've, I've been seeing it. People are like, they did. I think they did a Huberto thing where he like walked into the dressing room for the first time. And he's like, oh, like so happy to be here. And you look at the dressing room and it's like, that looks like my high school. Like it's just. Oh. Well, the Saddle Dome's 1400 years old. It is. It was built in the Roman time. It is. So and, like, and by the way, it's the public's fault that the arena is not getting built. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> no. I want that. I want you to understand that it's the tax dollars that really let them down. Oh, the God. billionaires really needed you on this one and you let them down. Um, uh, you know, I know that the Flames ownership is, and this is true, notoriously cheap, but it, you could invest, I don't know, in some LED lights or something to make it look somewhat cool in there. You got to look it up. Listen, it's all, embarrassing. All Hold it's going to take is 20 or 25 years of not fixing any potholes in the entire city and we can have a new. That's arena. the Calgary Flames dressing room. Let me, let me see. Oh no. Okay. I'm not trying to make this about the Leafs. That looks like the Leafs. Vis like, visiting there, room. There's like actually. There's like no not, HVAC pipes in no, there. That looks, that looks like fucking no, um uh, their practice arena. Where was the one I, in, in Etobicoke? A few years uh for performance. For that the new name. Uh, yeah. Uh, the uh no, you know what? Oh, it's Uyghur walking in. That's what it is. This look at how sad that jersey looked. So yeah. I recently, it, well, recently, probably two three years ago, went into the Niagara Ice Dogs locker room. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was pre COVID. <laughs> Yeah, remember that conversation we had about brain cells? It reminds me of a not as nice version of the Niagara Ice Dogs <laughs> dressing room. I'm, oh. ser I'm serious. Yeah. Yep. That's a tough locker. Might be room. time for a reddo next. Good summer. team. Good yep. team. Yeah. If only if if only the the tax paying public could not be so selfish. I'm just I'm just imagining Daryl Sutter walking in there and going, oh, "Okay, they're fancy pants. We got." benches <laughs> yeah for him it's perfect players are so soft yeah <laughs> there's no in way his muscle suit that's still the, growing the mckenzie Weger thing is real that is real that's that's a, there's a, no this isn't their practice their arena this is the saddle though what do you wear with what? photos hung up with painter's tape i think yeah man that's a bad locker room what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're no. There's just honestly, there's honestly like I don't know. We're late on this. Sixty percent of high schools have better locker oh, yeah. rooms than this. Yeah, most Dude. of most of the West End of the GTA has. Yeah, better, yeah. 
A, like I've been in locker rooms that are like a hundred million times better than this. A super minimal amount of drywall and paint would make this infinitely better, and they like they won't even do that. Yeah, you get, get an LED strip from Amazon. So Listen, it costs you twenty bucks. I'm not hating on the Flames or Flames fans. They're a very good team with the worst locker room. There's no way this is their main locker room. There's no way. It has to be the visitors' locker room, right? Or something. If or it's like the, the visitors, it's I guess the extra fine. locker room. Guys. Yeah, you don't expect the visitors' locker room to be <laughs> for, that nice. First off, what I love is that Calgary Flames locker room. Um, <laughs> uh, the first thing that comes up is the Oilers locker room when you walk in. <laughs> and see, when you go to see your Calgary and you walk into Edmonton, that's the locker room. It's a gigantic Oilers logo on the roof, oh, which wow. is hilarious. Uh, but yeah, this is the guys, this is the Flames locker room. You know like, what locker room oh is a million times God. nicer than that? The Oshawa Generals. The Oshawa Generals locker room is like, look, that. Let look. Me see. Well, that's not them, but the, no. that's a school project. No, I'm watching, I'm watching the Uyghur video where he gets a tour. Yeah. Like it's, that has got to be the visitor's room or just like a spare room on the side. You're right. It, do, it, it, it does look a little bit like the Leafs practice room. Yeah. That's so embarrassing. Dude, that sucks. Um, uh, <laughs> that the, sucks. The, hockey writers, the hockey writers literally said Calgary Flames yeah. locker room video should spark new arena conversations. <laughs> uh, you think? You think? Yeah, man. Oh, I feel bad. Great team. Man. Terrible locker room. I know. I know. That's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Adam, like, what what's was the, what's what the was Heron Park? Park Arena like? Yeah, oh, there, there, there you go. We're doing the same thing. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> We've been oh, doing the show oh, together. Oh, hey, there you almost go. got Tom Brady there. Um, okay, so <laughs> Dave, Cad Dave Cadeau, who we've all worked with on several occasions. Dave Cadeau, uh, former program director of the Fan 590, uh, you know, uh, actually allowed us to go on the air there. Um, Dave um, told me once, and he's like, this is how it all works. He's like, the reason that you see great arenas in Oakville and, and you know, and, uh, outside of the GTA is because the last time the arenas in the GTA were done en masse was for Expo 67, which was the 100-year <sighs> anniversary of Canada. Uh, and um, so arenas like Moss Park and Heron Park, where, where I started playing, were built in, in the mid-60s to be ready for Expo 67 as a show-off piece because they were getting Toronto ready and they're spending a bunch of public money on it. And so Heron Park Arena, when I first got there, there was only one, there, there, there was two, two pads of ice, two sheets of ice yeah. and a building. There were eight dressing rooms, four on one side, four on the other. So two for the two teams getting ready to go on and two for the two teams that were already on for each sheet of ice. That was it. And there was no heat in the entire arena except for an old couple of rusty bars that had orange looking sort of hot hot heat lamp things like the, the sort of at, when you're at the bus stop and yeah you press, at the yes. fucking go train has them now when you're and in they, the little things and they i was these. i was gonna say to help chickens hatch <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly that exactly that heat lamps <laughs> for a little egg yeah. Incubator, yeah. Incubator. Yeah. and they had these these brown <laughs> i'll never forget it these gigantic brown benches that parents would have to sit on but they were so weirdly uh, made because even my dad, who's like an average size guy, 5'11", yeah. uh, would sit on it and his feet wouldn't touch the ground. They were just like, it was almost like some local guy did it and said, oops, I made these too tall. Yeah. And like, and so, so Frank, they, can we get an arena? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there was like a step up onto the bench because you couldn't, you couldn't just sit on the bench normally. And then I remember the hockey benches themselves. It was so cold. And I started playing hockey like all the time. I think grade three, grade four. It was so cold. I can remember walking in the arena and being afraid to take my shoes off. Because I'd have like those Sorel boots or whatever that keep your feet warm. And then you you take your boots off. And it was so cold in there. You could see your the condensation come off your feet. And I remember being on the ice and sitting on the bench and waiting for my turn to get on the ice and hoping I didn't get hit by, hit by a puck. Because my feet were so cold fucking cold like it, it's this, you, you this was adam's like, experience yeah you I liked, how cold, I liked how cold it was in heron park arena you know why that's where i went to summer camp oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and the winter was terrible and then they revamped it and made it into a community center and it was a lot better it was a lot better the the dickie d story that i tell about having a dollar fifty for a two dollar ice cream it was always at heron park summer camp <laughs> 
<laughs> and you wanted the baseball glove with the gum in it, the right? The $2 baseball glove with the gum in it. But you only had $1.50. I only had $1.50, and I would stare at the change and try to make it $2, and it would never work. Uh, we forgot to mention Mackenzie Weger got a contract extension. Oh, he did? I missed that. <laughs> he did. Was it good? He did. Yes, big one. Uh, it's under seven. It's eight years. It's, wow, good so for him. It's the typical conversation. Whoa, the years. Oh, the cap hit. Cap hit is 6.25. Wow. So the, the big worry with the Matthew Kachuk trade for the Calgary Flames is, uh-oh, they could lose both these guys. Then they lock up Huberdo. And then they lock up Uyghur. And they lock up Uyghur. So now they have both guys locked up. Dude, it's looking like a really, really, really good trade for Calgary. It's looking like a not good trade. I mean, Kachuk's amazing. But that's a lot of value. Did they? I, I would have thought Huberto for Kachuk would have been enough. I I just don't understand what people expect Matthew Kachuk to be. Right. Like they're they're looking at the season he had last year and they're like he can do even more. Bro, he's he's one he of the amazing. most antagonistic players in the league and scored 40 goals and put up 100 points. I just don't know what else you think can be harvested there. Mhm. Yeah, Thoughts done. done. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good for Mackenzie uh, Weger. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was the contract extension. We also missed this news from uh, a couple weeks ago, or not weeks. I think it was last week. Uh, Yarmer Yager said he doesn't have a desire to play anymore, so he might be done. Yeah, even he's though he was fifty. Still, yeah, but he was still playing. It's still it's sad. I'm sure yeah, you get tired of it, right? It's sad, but like he's also been open about like I only play because I'm the biggest draw for my team. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good investment for him. I don't know. I got a little teary eyed knowing that Yager's. We won't see any more Yager highlights. A 50 year old on the ice skating around. It's crazy that as a 34 year old man, this will be the first time in my life that Yarmer Yager is not playing basically professionally somewhere because i'm pretty sure he was professional in the czech leagues when we were like when he was like 14 yeah let's look and this up. <laughs> and and i would that would have been like 1988 he broke into the nhl in like 1990 and he didn't i feel like he didn't play right away yarmir yager born in 1972 kladno czech republic his first season in kladno was 88 89 so you and I would so, have been just born. Oh just born. my goodness. So it's the first time since you and I were born that he will not be playing hockey professionally. Yager has been playing hockey. Yager has been playing professional hockey since the year Gretzky was traded to the Kings. Gretzky's first year as an LA King was Yager's first year playing professional hockey. Is and he is mind boggling still. He's with the clad. No nights right now. Statistics unavailable on hockey DB dude had eight goals last year. I was about to say the numbers from good. last season aren't bad. What no. do you got? What, what's, what's the assist count? Forget the goals. 11. Oh, all 11. Eight and 11, 19 he, points. I see. I could see him ha- being a guy who had like eight, eight goals and like 39 assists. Cause he was just a playmaker guy. He played with, there's a few names I recognize on this team. Jake Dotchin. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh wow! And uh, the top scorer, Thomas Pekanitz, Leaf Legend. What? Yeah. <laughs> Seventeen goals, thirty-six assists, still, fifty-three he's points. Probably still wearing games. that Habs turtleneck There's though. No way. And a goatee because he's not with Lou Lamorello anymore. Pekanitz is only thirty-eight. He's really not that old. I'm That's just to, cool that he's still out there. You're damn straight, thirty-eight's yeah. not old. Yeah, yeah. And Danny Cristo is a name I recognize as well. I think he was drafted by the. Uh, Cody Donahue, if I remember correctly, he was part of the Phaneuf trade to or from the Leafs. Oh, I love hockey DB. All right, we've got. I love into seven the, degrees of right. Yarmer Yager. Let's, let's, get the, let's just name guys. <laughs> of the podcast. Wait, what's that guy doing? <laughs> Here, wait. Landon Bow. Oh, there's another one. He Trust played me, two no games for the know. Dallas Stars. Nobody knows Landon Bow. Except Did for you. I guarantee they don't deep Landon Bow. <laughs> You bow down to Landon. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Get it, Sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.